private insurers under the medicare system doesn't work any better through this private insurers they just skim off fifteen billion dollars that was a giveaway and part of the reason is because lobbyists are able to shape how medicare works they did it on the prescription drug bill they've done it with respect to medicare and we are going to have to change the culture one of the you know tom uh... john mentioned uh... uh... me being wildly liberal mostly that's just me opposing george bush's uh... wrong-headed policies uh... since that i've uh, since i've been in congress but i think that it is also important to recognize that i worked with tom coburn the most conservative one of the most conservative republicans who john already mentioned to set up what we call a google for government which says that we are going to list every dollar of federal spending to make sure that the taxpayer can take a look and see who in fact is uh... is promoting uh... some of these spending what? projects that john's been railing about what i'm trying to get at is this excuse me excuse me if i may senator is trying to get at that you all one of you is going to be the president of the united states come january after in the at the in the middle of a huge financial crisis that is yet to be resolved and what i'm trying to get at is how this is going to affect you not in very specific small ways but in major ways in the approach you would take as to the president well how about a spending freeze on everything but defense veteran affairs and entitlement spending freeze i think we ought to seriously consider with the exceptions of caring for our veterans national defense and several other vital issues would you go for that well the problem with the spending freeze is you're using a hatchet uh... where you need a scalpel uh... there are some programs that are very important that are currently underfunded i want to increase early childhood education uh... and the notion that we should freeze that when there may be for example this medicare subsidy i think doesn't make sense let me tell you another place where i'd like to look for some savings we're currently spending ten billion dollars a month in iraq when they have a seventy nine billion dollar surplus uh, it seems to me that if we're going to be strong at home as well as strong abroad that we've got to look at bringing that war to a close Look, we're sending seven hundred billion dollars a year overseas to countries that don't like us very much some of that money ends up in the hands of terrorist organizations we have to have wind tide solar natural gas flex fuel cars and all that but we also have to have offshore drilling and we also have to have nuclear power Senator Obama opposes both storing and reprocessing of spent nuclear fuel. You can't get there from here. And the fact is that we can create 700,000 jobs by building, constructing 45 new nuclear power plants by the year 2030. Nuclear power is not only important as far as eliminating our dependence on foreign oil, but it's also important as far as climate change is concerned. An issue that I have been involved in for many, many years, and I'm proud of the work that I've done there, along with Senator Clinton. Let me see, before we go to another lead question, let me see if I can figure out a way to get mm -hmm. ask the same question a different, slightly different way here. Are you, are you willing to acknowledge, both of you, that this financial crisis is going to affect the way you rule the country as President of the United States beyond the kinds of things that you've already said. I mean, is it a major move? Is it going to have a major there, effect? There, there, there is no doubt that it's going to affect our budgets. There is no doubt about it. Uh, the, not only, even if we get all $700 billion back, let's assume the markets recover, we're holding assets long enough that eventually taxpayers get it back. And that happened during the Great Depression when uh, Roosevelt purchased uh, a whole bunch of homes. Over time, home values went back up. And in fact, government made a profit. If we're lucky and we do it right, that could potentially happen. But in the short term, there's an outlet, and we may not uh, see that money for a while. And because the economy is slowing down, I, I think we can also expect less tax revenue. So there's no doubt that and as help. president, I'm going to have to make some tough decisions. The only point I want to make is this, that in order to make those tough decisions, we've got to know what our values are and who we're fighting for and what our priorities are. And if we are spending... Three hundred billion dollars on tax cuts for people who don't need them and weren't even asking for them, uh, and we are leaving out uh, health care, which is crushing on people all across the country. Then I think we have made a bad decision, and I want to make sure we're not shortchanging our long-term priorities. Well, I want to make sure that we're not handing the health care system over to the federal government, which is basically what would ultimately happen with Senator Obama's health care plan. 
I want the families to make the decisions between themselves and their – and their doctors, not the federal government. Look, we have to obviously cut spending. I have fought to cut spending. Senator Obama has $800 billion in new spending programs. I would suggest he start by canceling some of those new spending programs that he has. We can, I think, adjust spending around to take care of the very much-needed programs, including taking care of our veterans. But I also want to say again, a healthy economy with low taxes, with not raising anyone's taxes, is probably the best recipe for eventually having our economy recover. And spending restraint has got to be a vital part of that. And the reason – one of the major reasons why we're in the difficulties we're in today is because spending got out of control. We owe China $500 billion. And spending, I know, can be brought under control because I have fought against excessive spending my entire career. And I've got plans to reduce and eliminate unnecessary and wasteful spending. And if there's anybody here who thinks there aren't agencies of government where spending can be cut and their budget slashed, they have not spent a lot of time in Washington. But I just have to make this point, Jim. John, it's been your president, who you said you agreed with 90 percent of the time, who presided over this increase in spending, this orgy of spending, and enormous deficits. And you voted for almost all of his budgets. So to stand here after eight years and say that you're going to lead on controlling spending and, you know, balancing our tax cuts so that they help middle-class families when over the last eight years that hasn't happened, I think just is, you know, kind of hard to swallow. Quick response. It's well known. It's well known that I have not been elected in this congeniality in the United States Senate, nor with the administration. I have opposed the president on spending, on climate change, on torture of prisoners, on Guantanamo Bay, on a long – on the way that the Iraq war was conducted. I have a long record, and the American people know me very well. All right. And that is independent and a maverick of the Senate, and I'm happy to say that I've got a partner that's a good maverick along with me now. All right. Let's go to another subject. Lead question. Two minutes to you, Senator McCain. Much has been said about the lessons of Vietnam. What do you see as the lessons of Iraq? I think the lessons of Iraq are very clear, that you cannot have a failed strategy that will then cause you to nearly lose a conflict. Our initial military success, we went into Baghdad and everybody celebrated, and then the war was very badly mishandled. I went to Iraq in 2003 and came back and said, we've got to change this strategy. This strategy requires additional troops. It requires a fundamental change in strategy, and I fought for it. And finally, we came up with a great general and a strategy that has succeeded. This strategy has succeeded, and we are winning in Iraq. And we will come home with victory and with honor. And that withdrawal is the result of every counterinsurgency that succeeds. And I want to tell you that now that we will succeed and our troops will come home and not in defeat, that we will see a stable ally in the region and a fledgling democracy. The consequences of defeat would have been increased Iranian influence. It would have been increase in sectarian violence. It would have been a wider war, which the United States of America might have had to come back. So there was a lot at stake there. And thanks to this great General David Petraeus and the troops who serve under him, they have succeeded. And we are winning in Iraq, and we will come home. And we will come home as we have when we have won other wars and not in defeat. Two minutes. How do you see the lessons of Iraq, Senator Obama? Well, this is an area where Senator McCain and I have a fundamental difference. Because I think the first question is whether we should have gone into the war in the first place. Six years ago, I stood up and opposed this war at a time when it was politically risky to do so. Because I said that not only did we not know how much it was going to cost, what our exit strategy might 